for them to learn to hunt for themselves. But as the evening approaches, things start to change. The young T-Rex have been brought to an ideal training ground. It pays for any hunter to be inquisitive. to learn. Something is stirring. A tiny Alcyone hatchling, just a few inches high and weighing less than two ounces. from hundreds of nests gather on the cliff top to prepare for their first flight. But their wings are still unformed. The bones of the long finger that supports their wing membrane must first straighten and lock together. And that will take some hours. They come here to feed, to rest and to raise their young. Tethy Draco are well adapted to spend time on the ground and not only make their nests here, but stay to protect their brood. And their young certainly need protection. And now, after a one and a half year pregnancy, a baby. It needs to get to the surface to take its very first breath. This young to orangisaur could live for 80 years. The sound is so low that many animals cannot hear it, but hadrosaurs can, and so are able to find their way towards the coast. But She has three young. Only four inches tall. And not quite ready to take on large crabs. They still rely on their mother's leftovers. It's best for the young not to stray too far. Hadrosaurs look after their young with care. They 
bring mouthfuls of plants for them to eat. Each nest may contain over 20 youngsters. Crossing turns to chaos. particularly dangerous for youngsters. This calf weighs only a fiftieth of the weight of his mother. And the plant's toxins could make him very sick indeed. Zalmoxes the last of a very ancient dinosaur lineage. This forest is one of their few remaining strongholds. Snacks for many predators. But snacks are nonetheless worth eating. So they have to be cautious. like T-Rex, have never reached this little island. So it should be a safe place for a mother to raise her brood. These small calves have been left behind among the saplings. Not to run. <laughs> These two are lucky to be back with their mother. The hatchling's eyes have not yet opened. Two months later, and the cubs have more than quadrupled in size. To produce enough milk for them, their mother must herself eat a great deal. The young are just a few weeks old. such a barren place, they face an uncertain future. And for the Velociraptors, the perfect time to start a family. out of the nest themselves. They need to learn that this strange new object is food and discover how to break into it.
Maybe their beak. Or perhaps a claw. Success. Perhaps more by luck than skill. But still a vital lesson for this next generation of egg thieves. The babies are relatively tiny, less than a foot long. There's nothing to eat except their mother's dung. Surprisingly, it's very nutritious and important to the hatchlings in other ways, too. Despite the dangers, hundreds of babies succeed in reaching the forest. Here, they will live together, hidden in the undergrowth, for several years. Until finally, they are big enough to join their mother's herd. A young pterosaur. An Asdarkid, just a few hours old. Being on an island means that she's able to take her first tentative steps in safety. Although she's only one foot tall, she will grow into a giant with a 30-foot wingspan. And to do that will require plenty of food. escape and now the chance to collect her rewards they move by jet propulsion but mastering new swimming skills is not easy Until now, these pools have provided a nursery. Each is carried along on this tiny living tide, pushed over the bare rock by those behind. Eventually, escaping to deeper water. Like these baby pyroraptors. The rest are ca <laughs> A family of Pectinodon. They're feathered but flightless.
Pectinodon are particularly intelligent dinosaurs. It doesn't take them long to work out the best way to collect flies. Fresh meat for her youngsters. Perhaps the first for many weeks. And for themselves. Here, in this remote and perhaps most challenging frontier of the North American continent, 66 million years ago,